this episode, we look at the Nazis burn the book behind Bambi. The classic was banished because its Jewish author used it to predict the Holocaust, with cruel brown shirts as the hunters. Translation of the 1923 novel by Felix Sultan reveals the story was never meant for kids. Bambi, A Life in the Woods, was written as an allegory about the anti-Semitism in Germany. Originals of the first edition are incredibly scarce because so many were burned. When Walt Disney was a budding artist, age seven, growing up on the family farm in rural Missouri, his older brother Roy shot a rabbit. Young Walt was appalled. That week he had learned to draw the farm's wild rabbits in his first cartoon doodles, sketching their floppy ears and wide eyes peeping at him through the grass. In protest, he refused to eat the rabbit stew. Three decades later, he created one of the best loved animated characters, Thumper, the fun-loving rabbit, who helps his pal Bambi to dodge the human hunters with their guns. How much more horrified Walt would have been if he'd known the grim truth about Bambi? A new translation of the original 1923 novel by Felix Solson reveals the story was never meant for children. Brutal, bleak and filled with cruelty, Bambi, A Life in the Woods, was written as an allegory about the rise of anti-Semitism in Germany. The hunters were thugs in brown shirts who invaded the forest home of peaceful animals and killed in a frenzy of bloodlust. Bambi's best friend is his cousin Gobo, who is shot and wounded near the beginning of the story. A man finds him and nurses him back to health before setting him free with a collar around his neck. Gobo believes humans are the animal's friends and trusts his collar to protect him from harm. Instead, it makes him an easily spotted target for the next hunter and he's dead within the week. The novel was banned on Hitler's orders in 1936, not long after the Nazis came to power. Though it was once a bestseller, originals of the first edition are scarce because so many were burned. Walt Disney did not read that version. The first English translation in 1928, on which the film is based, is much gentler. The politics are downplayed, and all the emphasis is on the conversation, much more likely to appeal to a family audience. A 70-minute animated film released in 1942 and nominated for three Oscars, was so powerful that some critics suggest it proved the trigger for anti-hunting movement. No one who wept for Bambi's mother will ever forget her death scene. Caught in the open as she graces with her little fawn, she urges Bambi to run to shelter through the thickets. As two shots ring out, he makes it to safety. His forlorn cry when she does not join him is heartbreaking. It's an unusually tragic moment for the children's film and emotionally devastating for many viewers. But to Professor Jack Sipes, the translation of the new edition of the book released next month, and the world's leading authority on literary fairy tales, this hardly begins to capture the pessimism of Sultan's original. The dark side of Bambi has always been there. It's been a book about survival in your own home. All the animals have been persecuted, and I think what shakes the reader is there's so many animals who are traitors, who help the hunters kill. In his story, even the trees are depressed. Two leaves on a branch in autumn have a doleful discussion about their fate and what will happen to them when they fall. These leaves talk very seriously about really dark questions humans have. We don't know what's going to happen to us when we die and we don't know why we must die. All the characters speak with an ornate elegance like intellectuals conversing in a Viennese cafe, the natural habitat of scientists and writers such as Albert Einstein and Sigmund Freud. This was not the side of Bambi that appealed to Disney. He purchased a story in 1937 from Sidney Franklin, head of production of MGM, who had tried and failed to shoot it as a live action story with real animals. Franklin had paid just a thousand pound, 20,000 pound in today's money for the film rights. The penniless Sultan was living in Vienna in fear of looming Nazi invasion of Austria. Disney Youth Studios were enjoying a huge hit with their full-length feature, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, wanted the animation to be as lifelike as possible. To retain the charm of these creatures, he told his artists our animated drawings must fully capture the natural movements and attitudes of living animals. He believed it would give the story a tremendous amount of appeal. At first, he sent the animators to a Los Angeles zoo to study how his deers move. Then he had a private zoo built on studio grounds with two fawns and various other woodland creatures. Wildlife artists were hired to give advice to the cartoonists, who 
who also watched countless hours of live footage. Bambi himself, a European road deer in the book, became an American white-tailed deer. The results thrilled Disney when he saw the early sequence, drawn in outlines without colouring, of Bambi meeting a butterfly. He exclaimed, this is pure gold. The scene survived into the finished picture, as the little deer goes cross-eyed looking at the insect that has landed on his nose. Critics were less impressed. It took three years to finish, and even with 12 minutes cut from the final script, the budget tripled to 1.7 million, 29 million in today's money. It grows slightly less than that at the box office. And the New York Times sniped, in search for perfection, Mr. Disney is comparisonly close to tossing away his old world of cartoon fantasy. It was denounced too by the hunting lobby, outdoor life magazine called Bambi the worst insult ever offered to any form to American sportsmen and conservationists. Disney was despondent when he released the picture. Coming after Fantasia and Pinocchio, which were also flops at first, it left the studio 4.3 million, 73 million today's money, in debt. But Bambi became a classic, one of Disney's biggest earners ever. Audiences loved it on re-release in 1947, and by 2005, when the 60th anniversary Platinum Edition DVD was released, the film had grossed 102 million in its lifetime. Felix Salter never saw a penny of that. He sold the rights for a thousand pounds to the man from MGM, and that's all he ever received. A belated court case in the 1990s over the book's disputed copyright and in the Disney Studios' favour. Sultan did receive a bonus in 1938, though when Disney bought another of his stories, Perry, about a squirrel, the tale became a short feature that is now quite forgotten. Sultan fled Vienna when Germans annexed Austria that same year. He died in exile in Zurich in 1945, but his influence on generations of children lives on, and not only as the legacy of his bitter, morbid novel about a hunted deer, in the 1950s, Disney bought another of his quirky animal stories, The Hound of Florence, and based The Shaggy Dog, a live-action comedy on it. The real surprise of the saga, though, is what became of Bambi's friend Gobo, the trusting deer who thought his leather collar would protect him. Gobo was reimagined by Disney as Bobo, a rabbit like those he sketched as a child on the farm. Then Bobo was renamed Thumper, the little furball who takes Bambi skating on a frozen pond and teaches us, if you can't say anything nice, don't say nothing at all. That's a far cry from the existential despair in the face of Nazism.